The next one I would like to talk about are beliefs in an afterlife. Now, by the way, I am not proposing that I know anything about what happens after death. I don't. I don't have a clue. I would be uh, happily surprised to find myself as a light body <laughs> afterward, but um, I really, I don't have a clue, and I don't think anybody else does either. So to subscribe to various myths about an afterlife and to base your current life on those myths seems to me a bit misguided. And a lot of people are doing that. A lot of people are in this life, basically in some idea of a preparation for, or an upgrade to, or uh, somehow a postponement of this life in service of some other life that, frankly, is not a guarantee. You are guaranteed this one. So that is one way that the belief in the afterlife really affects the, um, the, the lived, experienced sense, the aliveness of this life. And actually, when you think about it, if you really didn't know for sure there was any continuation, it makes this life all the more precious, right? It makes it all the more amazing that you are here for this blink in eternity and that you get to experience all of this, which is pretty amazing. Flies by, of course, but might as well experience it while we're here, instead of dreaming and fantasizing about some other, some other life. It makes, I think it makes a certain, a ten, it makes for a certain tenderness about this very life an appreciation for, a deep gratitude for. Now obviously belief in afterlife is comforting to people. It's very comforting. And if you're just someone who happens to believe that and you're comforted by it, that's fine. I'm actually speaking for those people who don't have much belief in it and don't feel very comforted as a result. And I'm, I'm saying that there is a way to feel comforted. There is a way. And that is, at least this is how I perceive it, I now tune into what you could call the primordial force. I don't mean anything magical about that, but simply the force of life, the thrust of existence that keeps manifesting itself. And I kind of tune into that as my um, ancestor. Um, or as my own identity. And I know that it, 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 you know, it makes these forms and then they turn to dust and then who knows what happens, but it goes on. It blooms and dies and blooms and dies and blooms and dies. And when I let myself just tune into that, you know, you, you, it's as though you're living in eternity, but as I always add, just for a short while, while you're here but you have a sense of an eternal, ongoing field of life, which could be happening really all over the universe. And you then aren't as afraid about the, your own impending exit, because you don't have the all and the everything bundled into me, 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 me. Yes, it's sad that the personal experience comes to an end. It's terribly sad, of course. But if you also have some aspect of your awareness that leaves room for, ah, but, you know, life goes on, then there's, there's something very um, free about that. And you then, you know, I know, I've been noticing one of the things that's happening for me a lot uh, around loss is that I tend to move my awareness into the universality of the loss. So I'm experiencing both the personal sense of loss, but I also, I notice each and every time now, it goes into how many fathers, how many brothers, how many friends, how many colleagues have we all 
lost and it's you know it's it's the universality of the experience that actually has a calming effect how many tears have we all cried and will cry right but at the same time there's always this new crop coming <laughs> It's always the new coming in, new life, new sprouts everywhere. So this is my counterpoint to the belief in the afterlife. It's the it's the lived true experience in this life <laughs> that trumps that is that is the predominant awareness.